Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Ah, bonjour. As you may already know, oh my gosh, okay, I'll stop the accent. I'm so sorry. I was like excited about a French accent, but anyway, Southcast the podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, but we will be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and Twitter. Yeah, it'll be, I won't talk about that too much, I promise. Today, we're going to talk about the internet and how to survive inside of it. (laughs) I posted my first video to YouTube, I think about a decade ago. And even before that, I had like a new blog every year. I had a live journal that I took really seriously, like really seriously, like too seriously. I've had content that's viewed by millions of people and I've made a lot of content that found a very niche audience, (laughs) as in it didn't reach a lot of people. (laughs) But doesn't that sound better? We just have a very niche audience, like my mom. (laughs) So I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of shit. I feel like I live inside the internet most of the time. Um, My career is, has been possible because of the internet. Some of my relationships have been possible because of the internet. And I mean, this is possible because of the internet, and I'm really thankful for that. But the internet can make us feel like poo-poo, right? I know you know. I know you know. There's, like, those nights where the guy on TikTok comes up and he's like, Hey, I noticed you've been scrolling for 18 hours, and I'm worried about you. (laughs) He says it with such a big smile on his face. I'm like, oh my God, are you my boyfriend? I don't know. Anyway, so I want to talk about four different kinds of boundaries today. It's just a list of little boundaries that I've been thinking about. They are boundaries around your content, your interactions, your time, and your expectations. And uh, I think to kick it off, I want to tell you a little a little story about baby Christina. The year was 2016. I was the luckiest bug, just the luckiest, because I got what I would still consider like my dream job. I was hired by a women's website to make videos, make funny videos about being a person. And this was in the heyday of BuzzFeed and all their videos and um, Refinery29. Also, just I looked at these kind of giants and I was like, I'm gonna be like that. Even though it's kind of just a one, one woman show most of the time. And um, I just got so lucky because one of the first videos that I made just hit the right, I don't know, I think it's like surfing where you have to catch the wave at the right time or whatever. And for some reason, when we posted this video to Facebook, remember that horrible place, Facebook? It just hit the wave at the right time. And within 24 hours, it had like 10 million views. Like it was bonkers, like unimaginable. And um, (laughs) it was a video of me putting on eyeliner and just making a mess of it, Um, which I did know was a relatable thing. I just didn't. 
I never thought I didn't, I still don't, you know, I just, uh, huh? What? I don't, huh? Wow. Um, it was really cool. And the next day I went into work and everyone in the office was so freaking nice and supportive and they like surprised me with a cake. What? So nice. Um, but then we, you know, went back to work and things went back to normal. I had to start working on the next video. It was just, uh, back to normal. Um, except for the meanwhile, inside the internet, in the alternate reality that is the internet, the video views kept growing until it was like at 60 million views, which is, huh? What? And, and so many comments. And I actually keep those comments in my heart because so many of them were really like kind, generous people giving me advice on how to do my eyeliner correctly. It was so cute. And people would post selfies of their eyeliner. Like, that's amazing. There was like a small community happening in the comment section and even though I was you know going home to my crummy basement apartment with no windows and just you know being stuck in traffic and being stressed out about going grocery shopping or whatever there was this alternate reality where um I was a superstar (laughs) And uh, one of my friends got in touch and was like, I want to take you out. Like, I got us on the list for this, like, bar opening and, like, it's going to be so much fun and, like, exclusive. So, like, I really want you to come with me. And I was like, oh, do I dare to dream that yeah, like, this is something to celebrate. I should celebrate it. Yeah, this might be, like, the start of something. And, like, I had had another video before this um, go, I don't hate the word viral. It reached a lot of people, and it was um, a parody of Les Mis, and it was at the time when the movie came out, and Russell Crowe tweeted the link out, and that was very freaking cool especially because I played Russell Crowe in the, in the video <laughs> it was so silly and uh a, a different friend from elementary school or middle school texted me and was like I saw Russell Crowe tweeted your video like how does it feel to have made it and I remember I was like sitting alone alone like in a city where I had like two friends and not that that was a problem it was actually wonderful but just living of just such a normal life so like I don't know I didn't have an oven so I used like a toaster for everything I had a, a hot plate like it was that kind of phase of life and I just was like this can this is make oh my god have I made it and I was like no 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 like don't don't get too excited. But getting invited to a bar opening and my friend bought me champagne and just, I mean, she was so kind. And I think for a couple minutes, I really was like, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm famous. Oh my God. Like maybe, maybe this is it. Like maybe this is making it oh my god, like, what am I gonna do now? Oh, I'm so, oh, ooh, champagne, clinky, clinky, like, ooh. And then I went to the bathroom, and on the way out, a guy turned around at the bar, and he locked eyes with me, and he said, oh my god, it's you. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. Yes, it's me. I can't believe you even recognize me without the eyeliner all over my face. And he goes, Stephanie, right? <laughs> he goes, 
because he thought I was his date from a dating app. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> so, um, that was a really good reminder that um, I think about pretty much every day that the internet and real life are not the same thing. <laughs> Even though I have made very, very real connections and lovely relationships and, um, you know, I've been affected by content that I've watched and read on the internet, um, I do always keep in mind that there are things that I don't know about people because the internet is just like one side of this beautiful multifaceted diamond you know so um maybe that brings us to the uh boundary about expectations (laughs) sorry so I feel like I mean tell me if I'm wrong but I had this very cool job I was being paid to create content, but there came a point where that's almost like everyone's job now, and I mean, I know a lot of people do it for fun, like TikTok is the perfect example of people just like being themselves and just doing things because they enjoy it, or are like mystified by life, or the berries and cream guy, and like that's so magical. But, um, like, even if it's not your job, I feel like you're probably creating content. Am I right? Putting, putting stuff on Instagram, maybe. Maybe you're still on Facebook. I don't know. Um, maybe you have dabbled in TikTok, tried the little editing, the little edit, edit tools, maybe. Having expectations that are realistic is tricky because you definitely want to believe in yourself. (laughs) Like you don't want to be like, ugh, my expectation for this is that like no one's going to care. That's a bummer. You care. That matters. You care. I care. I care about you. I care that you're doing stuff and you're experimenting with like your art and your voice like that's fantastic and what a great time to do that um but I think having maybe maybe it's less about expectations and and also uh the word uh intention 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 maybe I'll say it so many times it will have no meaning intention Um, I think if you have uh, from the beginning the idea that what you're going to make, the sole purpose of it is to get millions of views, um, unfortunately, I think it's going to feel really crappy, even if you do get lots of views, because it'll just never be enough. Or maybe like you can find happiness in that and like, forget me, like don't listen to what I'm saying. But you really have to, like, examine yourself. So I want to tell another story. Is that okay? Yeah, whatever. It's my podcast. I'm the boss here. So sit back. (laughs) Oh, my God. That was so harsh. I'm sorry. (laughs) I love you. Um, At the beginning of the pandemic, my dad, who is a doctor, was like, I'm seeing all of these things that we're going to need to do in hospitals, like how to keep track of cases. Um, People should be wearing masks. Yeah, he called it uh, way before anyone was wearing masks. Um, mm, I don't know, other organizational stuff that only he and other medical professionals would understand. And, um, you know, at his hospital, he's like a leader there. He has been the chief of stuff. He's led many a meeting. You know, this was a conversation that they were having there already. And I think he was like a big player in that conversation. 
So he was like, hello, my daughter, you work inside of the internet. And I was like, yes, I do, father. Thank you. And he was like, well, how do I get these ideas that we've been having out to a broader audience? And I was like, um, should I make a video about it? It doesn't seem appropriate. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> so we kind of talked about it and we decided to make a Twitter account. So I made my dad a Twitter and um, I started posting like multiple times a day. I treated it like a job. I like wrote out all the tweets for the week and ran them by him, like got approval from the boss and I know people talk a lot about like negative comments being a bad, scary part of the internet. And I completely agree. But something we don't talk about is the disappointment that comes with someone um, not commenting at all, <laughs> if that makes sense. I just felt so guilty that I wasn't like making tweets for my dad that were going viral and like that he wasn't getting invited on the Ellen show or, or to Dr. Fauci's house or whatever. And I think it was because my intention was like, I'm going to reach a billion people or like, I'm gonna make my dad famous or something. I mean, also our brains were pretty scrambled at this point. Cause like I said, beginning of the pandemic, very scary time. But I think if I had had a better boundary about my expectations and my intention, the whole thing would have just been more enjoyable because it was really just like, um, you know, it was expressing these ideas that a really smart person had. And instead I made it about like, Oh, not enough people are saying. And like the worst thing that happened was my dad said something along the lines of like, you know, I like, I thought that I had good ideas until I got a Twitter and I was like, oh my fucking God, this is not, I hate this. I, oh my God, I hate, oh no, that's, I never want anyone to feel that way. Like the internet is just this one reality and like that doesn't diminish like how much you've accomplished in your real life. Oh my gosh, it's going to make me burp. Excuse me. I'm just like passionate burping over here. Oh, deep breath. Sorry. Wow. Okay. I didn't expect that story to get me so riled up, but here we are. This is a, this is a, this is a tough boundary to make with yourself because Obviously, you want to reach for the... No, you don't want to reach for the stars. You want to reach for the moon. And if you miss, you'll land among the stars. You know what I'm saying? But also, like, you will have such a better time if your, like, intention and expectation is that you have expressed yourself or that you had fun making something or that you did a job like, that is a thing, too. Like, if this is something where the company you work for is like, I need you to make content or whatever. Um, if you uh, at least prioritize those expectations and, like, intentions over the numbers and the, like, I'm putting air quotes around this, like, success of social media and the internet and stuff. Like, oh, my gosh, it's just so, it's just so much better for your brain. I promise. I promise. Oh, okay, let's move on to some other boundaries. Um, ooh, your content. So this is something that's going to take some introspection. And also, I think it's something that you should do every few months if if you're posting a lot or whatever. I think deciding on like where your boundaries are in terms of like how much of yourself you're sharing can just make your experience so much better 
because otherwise what will happen is you'll overshare by accident. And this is coming from someone who is, <laughs> I mean, me, I would never, I've never overshared in my life. the first episode of this podcast is about poop. Anyway, if you decide beforehand, you probably won't accidentally share something you didn't mean to share. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes? This is, again, a slippery slope because, you know, if you're like, well, my boundary is I'm not going to share any of the bad stuff that ever happens. I mean, that makes sense. It's like nobody's business, obviously. Like, you got to live your life in the in your actual life. Um, but, you know, then if you're just putting out like a perfect version of yourself, how does that make you feel? Maybe it makes you feel great. Maybe it does. It makes me feel kind of phony because my just like in the course of like a day, I go through so many different twists and turns of emotion that like if I just posted happy versions of myself it would be like such a lie (laughs) and I don't want to lie to you so um but different boundaries I mean like for instance um I used to have a boundary that I didn't want to talk about my relationships online that changed at some point because I think I felt safe And then that changed again because then I was like, oh, wait a second. (laughs) I have been laid dumped and I don't know who to talk to about it. Why not the internet? Obviously. Um, Other boundaries I've had is like, um, I, I don't think doing nudity on the internet is for me. You know, I'm like kind of like jealous and also like super excited for people on OnlyFans who are just like doing the thing they're doing the thing I'm kind of keep that side of my life for myself (laughs) the side of my life like my butt I don't know and that's just because I've examined like my comfort levels and maybe that'll change who knows 2022 I don't (laughs) I don't know so okay so how do you make this boundary um Sometimes I also, like, make lists. I'm just, like, a fan of paper and pen. I think you know this. And just, like, write out things that you want to include in your your work. Like, oh, like, okay. So I've been listening to Inside the Bo Burnham special again. I go through phases where I like listen to it constantly and then I have to like stop for a little while and then right now I'm in a phase where I'm like just play it on repeat and I've seen so much um like conversation on the internet of like is Bo Burnham really depressed or is Bo Burnham like really did he really lock himself in a room etc and I'm just here to say that like it doesn't matter (laughs) The final product is the only thing, not even a product. Oh, the final, the final form that his creativity took is what matters. And that's all that matters for you. Like you can create a video about, I mean, like that eyeliner video. I'm, I, yes, I've messed up my eyeliner, but also like I'm, I'm also a person who is like painstakingly doing makeup or whatever. I definitely back then. Was I lying? No. I was just showing like one little side of myself. That's, and that's the only thing you can show on the internet because it's, it's one dimensional. Oh, ooh, ooh, someone write that down. So one dimensional. So check in with yourself every so often. It doesn't even have to be like, oh my God, am I going to like share this really personal thing? Like, am I going to talk about my divorce? Am I going to talk about like my, my dog dying or something? Like you don't have to get into that stuff necessarily. You can start out with just like, am I going to share like what I had for lunch? (laughs) Is that making me feel comfortable? Um, am I going to show my friends? Am I going to show my work? Am I going to show what I do for my job? 
you know, there are some things that I do for my job that I never would put on social media, mostly because I'm just like, this is boring. (laughs) But also just because it's something that's mine. And that, that makes me feel good. Even right now, I feel kind of a little like sparkle of pride because I'm like, yeah, that's mine. (laughs) You can't have it. You can't hashtag that. It's mine. Speaking of hashtags, (laughs) no, I'm just kidding. Um, It's that time. It is that time where I get to read an ad. Are you ready? I'm so excited. I love, this makes me feel like a professional, a professional podcaster. Okay, you ready? Do you struggle with your mental health and feel like you have difficulty managing your emotions? Dive Through has partnered with mental health professionals to create interactive courses, including the free course, Self-Regulating Your Emotions, so you can feel like you have the tools to live a mentally healthier and more fulfilling life. Download the Dive Through app for free on the App Store or Google Play. Whoa, that felt great. How was that? Did I sound like a cool robot lady? I just want to sound like Smart House. Yeah, okay, that was great. Thank you for listening. Um, Let's get to the last two boundaries. Okay. Oh, your interactions. Share. Interactions. Like I said, connecting on the internet is very, very real to me. Um, I remember in seventh grade downloading AOL Instant Messenger and, and like talking to boys from other schools and just being like, oh my God, I can talk to boys. This is, this is, this is it. Oh, Mr. Hi. Oh, there's a cat here. You can't type. You don't even need the internet. You're too beautiful. Thank you. Okay, can I finish though? I'm on the second to last boundary. Okay, thank you. Anyway, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. I made very important friendships on AOL Instant Messenger because I could be in a weird way like my funniest self because I could write it instead of having to think about things when I was like oh, I'm in front of boys I don't want to think about it I'm so awkward mm. and I mean at one point I had <laughs> I had a boyfriend on the internet and I know for a fact that he was a real 12 year old just like me. (laughs) Oh my God. And we just talked on Instant Messenger and we kept being like, we're going to meet up, like let's meet up. And then we just never did. And so our whole relationship took place online pretty much. Like, um, I'm pretty sure we were like, I'm in love with you. Like, you are everything to me. Like, I'm changing my away message. Like, I love <laughs> Will. Sorry, Will, if this is if you're listening to this, I'm so sorry for the way things ended up. Cause then we then we broke up online too. It was so emotional. It was very real to me. And I think we met in person like way later and I just lost I it was so awkward. I it's fine. It's fine. <clears throat> um But I feel like that just was the beginning of how many times I've connected with someone online and it's uh, become like a real friendship, a real relationship. And then goes from that one dimensional internet world to the real world. But um, you have to have boundaries around your interactions. And uh, I think because I feel like I connect with people on the internet. I've actually had some trouble with that, to be completely honest. Oh my god! Hi, mister! Oh, there's a cat here. He's beautiful. Hi. This is really disruptive. 
Do you want to do you have something to say? That was nice. Mister, I'm talking about my prepubescent love life. Let me have this. I love you. Um, there was a time where I constantly checked my DMs and I would respond to every single person. Um, sometimes they would ask me really personal questions and I would just tell them things. Um, don't recommend, definitely don't recommend because you're kind of giving away pieces of yourself when you do that, honestly. And then when it comes time to share with the real people in your life, you're kind of depleted. I'm serious. It's real. Obviously, you have to figure out your own boundaries around that. But for me, um, I realized it only once I was, like, kind of burnt out from Mister from sharing, you know, on my main page and making my main content, but then being in the direct messages, like, I don't know, just telling people things they didn't really need to know. <laughs> and... Mister, that's so cute. We're talking about boundaries and you have none. You have not one boundary. Mommy is working. I love you so much. There's another kind of um, boundary of interactions, which is like deciding when to fight with someone. I know we've all experienced this maybe even more than ever that like someone makes a comment about something you don't agree with and you have to decide before that happens whether or not you're going to engage with that. I really do think so because your emotions are going to like you're going to be like when a when a cartoon character is like a thermometer and like the heat rises and then their head explodes in steam and you're not going to be able to make the best choice for like your mental health. So I have, I mean, the boundary that I would never engage with negative comments, even that, really? Mr. is just on my desk knocking things over. What can I do for you? Okay. I, at one point, I would actually respond to negative comments with a joke which would be funny for a second but it was again just like giving pieces of myself away and obviously giving it giving myself to people that did not have my best interest at heart if they were on my videos leaving me mean comments or in my messages asking for like weird pictures that was something um People would be like, like several, I got a bunch of messages that were like, I want pictures of your body. And so I had like a diagram of like an, <laughs> of um, like a doctor's poster. But anyway, it was not even that funny, obviously. And it wasn't, it didn't bring me any joy. So it was only depleting me. Also, it's good to think about boundaries when it comes to the interactions online that you want to bring into your normal life and this can be really difficult and um I haven't done the best at this um where I can see that somebody feels like they know me because of what I've shared on the internet and then um, you know, when our conversations move more to real life or meet in person or email or something and, and yeah, I'm having a hard time talking about it, I think, because I, 
I don't like conflict. <laughs> and um, it's hard to, to tell someone, like, I think this is crossing a boundary that I have. And um, at one point, I made a rule that was, like, a three strikes rule. Like, so if somebody kind of crosses the boundary and would make me uncomfortable, I'd be like, hey, you made me uncomfortable, this and this. And then strike two was if they knew about that and then they did it again. And I mean, sometimes strike, sometimes two strikes is enough. But then, and then three strikes, I would be like, listen, I told you and like, this is, this is the end. And I have to not talk to you for a little while. And like, let me know if you want to try again. But right now I'm not ready for that. And, um, there have been times where I've like completely skipped the strikes and it just, I hit a wall of like feeling bad. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. She's a poet. But maybe you understand. Maybe this has happened to you in another situation like at work or with your family or with other loved ones where they just see the relationship completely differently than you do and it just starts creating a friction and it starts taking way too much energy out of you and... And yeah, see, this is why we need the boundaries, because I think if my boundaries had been stronger, I wouldn't have gotten myself into those situations. Like, maybe I need to, like, not so freely give out my contact information. I don't know. It's weird, because also, I'm, like, okay to take the the risk, because I have made beautiful friends, and... um. Yeah, anyway, to each his own, and you should think about how you feel about that. We should move on now, because obviously I am having a meltdown. My brain is like one of those videos where someone has a, a bunch of crayons lined up, and then they take like a heat gun or like a blow dryer, and it's just like, Mwah. you know? I know you know. Okay, so the last boundary I want to talk about is your time. Your time. Because we can lose time to the internet. We lose so much time. I lose so much time. I, yeah, uh, especially the past year or whatever, um, just like mindless. When something becomes mindless, then it, that definitely starts like sucking the life out of you. I don't know how else to explain it. It's like, you're like not tired but you're exhausted right am I right so uh, this feels so hypocritical that I'm saying this but setting boundaries of how long you're gonna spend taking things in on social media you know there's the 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 intake and the outtake the what you're eating and what you're pooping what you're Putting in your brain and what you're putting out into the world. That's the one. What you're putting into your brain, what you're putting out into the world. And you have to figure out how much things that you're putting in your brain actually inspire you and keep your creative battery juiced. Because, like, if you're filling a gas tank... And then you just keep letting it run until the gas tank like overflows. You just have like a safety hazard and it's going to smell terrible. And you're like, there's gasoline on my shoes. And like that can really happen with your brain. I think the longer you stay kind of mindlessly scrolling, at least, okay, this is definitely just me, my experience. Like the easier it is to fall into comparison where you're like, oh my gosh, this person seems to be doing so much more than I am. Or like, oh my gosh, like 
Why haven't I won an award lately? <laughs> and, um, like, again, I know we know this, but it's hard to, like, remember that again, it's all fabricated. <laughs> all of it is just one little sliver of, of the pie. It's not even, like, a piece. It's just, like, when someone's like, no, I want a smaller piece. Like, no, I'm smaller, smaller. And you're like, that's not a piece. That's just a sliver. Um, and then, and then you have to think about boundaries of the time you want to spend on the things that you're putting out into the world. If I, I had a boss give me really, really good advice once and it was, um, about writing, but I think it can apply to a lot of different things. And what she said was that if you sit down to write something and it's let's say 300 words 300 words whatever um decide that it's gonna take you like half an hour and once it starts taking more than that then either take a break or move on to something else or decide if it's even like important enough to keep working on or like evaluate if you're stuck because if you're stuck then the order of business is different than if you're writing and it's taking a long time. Does that make sense? So if you're like, yeah, I want to dabble in TikTok. This is going to be like so fun. Like my intention is to just have fun. I like want to be part of this community. And then you find yourself scrolling, 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 scrolling. Maybe you're like, I want to know the trends. I want to do this lip lip thinking thing lip syncing thing and you find yourself just like going down a rabbit hole instead of like just making the thing that you opened the app to make or if you do get all the way to that plus button and you make a video and then you're just like taking so much like painstaking time editing it and trying to make it perfect or second guessing it, or doing take after take. Yes, I'm yawning. I am a professional. You just have to think like, is this worth it? Because it might be. It might, you might find joy in in editing and re-editing and shooting and reshooting or like enjoying people's take you know, on a song or a joke. Like, you have to figure that out for yourself. And and once you know, you kind of have to, like, remember it. You know how that saying that's like, if someone tells you who they are, believe them? Yeah, sometimes that works for yourself. <laughs> so, like, if one day you find yourself being like, Man, I spend way too much time on that app. Mm, you just kind of gave yourself a clue of what you need to do. It's horrible. You can't unknow it now. You have to, you have like two choices. You can just keep doing the same thing that, you know, makes you feel poopy. Or you can try something new and potentially feel better. Or just like a different kind of poopy. <laughs> These are the boundaries that I've been thinking about for these four content interactions, your time, and then your expectations. But I don't mean to put anything more on your plate, but there might be other boundaries that you need to think about too. Like, um, I can't think of any right now. I've reached my own boundary. <laughs> In terms of how much I can think about boundaries. It's like, it's weird. It's kind of like creating rules for yourself. But, I don't know. Be gentle with your brain. Check in with yourself. Write things down so you can see them later. And when your body tells you something, try to listen. I know it's really hard. But I know you can do it. Yeah? 
Was that a good? We, did, we just that was boundaries, right? Boundaries, internet. We're all doing great. What do you think? Boundary time, excellent. <laughs> I am wishing you so many good things, and good things don't mean likes and followers. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. I love you. I love you. You're doing great. And I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.